turn on my microphone. I'm going to turn on my camera and mute my microphone. Michael, feel free to take. Thank you, Trevor. Well, I'd like to welcome everybody. This is the uh, a virtual open house for the Union Street Northeast Family Friendly Bikeway Project. Uh, specifically, this project is looking at Union Street between Commercial Street Northeast and Summer Street uh, Northeast. Um, let's see, just to kind of let you kind of know what the plan is here, we'll kind of we're going to work through a presentation. It's going to won't be too long of a presentation, and then we will uh, kind of move over to open it up for any questions and answers um, throughout the uh, uh, presentation. Um, kind of ask that you keep your microphones muted. That way we can kind of get through the presentation. We'll, you know, feel free to put comments or questions in the chat, or you can wait till the end and we will go through anything that you have there. Um, this presentation is being recorded so that we can post it to the website after the meeting. And if there is, for some reason, you know, you lose connection, feel free to come back and we will still be here. Um, just for some introductions, um, I'm Michael Miller. I'm the senior project manager with the city of Salem. Uh, this is a one of the projects I am currently working on. Also on the team for this specific project, we have a consultant engineer, uh, Harper Hoff, Peterson Regalis, and the consultant team there consists of uh, Bo Brayman, the associate principal, and Bobby Jackson, the project engineer. And uh, Bobby will kind of work us through a few of the slides as we go through this presentation, kind of talk through uh, the information we've got there. Um, additionally, on the city side, we've got Trevor Smith. He's our public works information officer, one who introduced the meeting as hosting this. And he's also monitoring any of the chats you guys post. And then we've got some other engineering staff to answer questions if need be. So briefly, just kind of wanted to go over a little bit of the background, kind of lay out the groundwork at where this project uh, came from. Um, in 2011, uh, the central mobility study originally started, and that is where this project uh, originated from, is from the central uh, mobility study. Uh, that study was completed in 2013 and uh, submitted to Council for recommendation ad and adoption. Um, in 2014, that recommendation uh, then was incorporated into the Salem Transportation Plan. There's a lot of different projects that are part of that central Salem mobility study. This is just one portion of the project, uh, specifically the bike friendly portion is what this one came out of. Um, in 2017, the first family friendly bikeway improvement project uh, was, uh, for, was completed. Um, that one was at the adding a, a signal to the intersection of Union and Commercial Street and adding bike facilities between uh, Front Street and Commercial. Go back here. Um, then uh, currently, again from the adopted recommendations, um, out of and that first project was a short-term goal project, which was slated for about a ten within ten years to be completed. So currently we're looking at what is from that recommendation, a medium term goal to be completed within 15 years of that, uh, the study being completed. And this one is uh, providing a family friendly bike facilities on Union Street between commercial and winter. Um, from that study, some of the options in may include one-way or two-way cycle tracks, some buffered bike lanes, shared use paths or other facilities were some of the items that were listed in the study as being potential solutions to 
creating this family-friendly bikeway. Um, it was noted at the time of the study that uh, with the recommendations that implement, implementation of improvements on Union Street would potentially remove existing on-street parking and that additional parking could be added, but would impact the urban landscape or the existing trees in the area. So where this area is, is specifically, it is within the historic downtown corridor on Union Street. It is uh, on this map here, it is located towards the Northern end of the downtown district. Um, the black line here shows what the project limits are between Commercial Street and Summer Street. And also points out that there is the a uh, new signal proposed for the intersection of Liberty and Union. This project would tie on to the existing first phase of the, the projects and continue the bike path that would come over the Union, St Union Street uh, bike or Union Street bridge from the, and, and it looks at tying in the bike facility into winter and eventually down towards the 12th Street Promenade. So from there, kind of to walk us through a little bit of the actual kind of where we're looking at for design, I'll turn control over to Bobby Jackson with, or Jacobson with uh, HHPR. Hey guys, um, so I'll kind of start at com Commercial Street and work my way east as I discuss the design. Um, so starting between Commercial and Liberty, basically we're protecting the curb lines on the existing street and that's the case for generally the entire project. We're taking the footprint, the existing footprint out there today from curb to curb. And it's really just a restriping exercise where we're reconfiguring the striping to make it more safe for cyclists. So between commercial and liberty, what we're doing is removing the, there's angled parking stalls on each side. And we're removing those and replacing them with standard parallel parking um, in order to fit a buffered bike lane on each side. And the buffered bike lane is six feet wide with a three foot buffer um, between the parking and the cyclists. So kind of as Michael mentioned, this, this whole project is really balancing bicycle and pedestrian safety with parking utilization and also looking at trees. Um, so like in this block, for example, we're able to protect all the trees. However, we're losing some parking stalls. As you can see, we're losing one parking stall in this area. We're losing five in this area, um, three and four, but we're gaining a safe um, bike lane for pedestrians and cyclists. Um, moving to the Liberty intersection, where this entire intersection will be a new signalized intersection. Um, so we'll maintain turn lanes um, and, add, and we'll update the curb returns on each, um, at each corner to make sure we're meeting ADA standards. Um, so I guess moving east to the next block. Do I have control to? Yes. Is it not moving? No. Can you guys see my my cursor though? Sometimes. Yeah, you, uh, you somebody switched over the next block. Okay. One, so, one thing, Bobby, on the, those curb returns, we, yeah. we're, we're, we're updating all the curb returns to current ADA standards, and we're also rebuilding them to the roadway classification. 
city's roadway classification for those curb return um, radii. So a lot of the radiuses are uh, too small for some of the truck turning movements. It makes it tough for the trucks to get around the corner safely. So we're uh, installing larger radius for um, the, the car, move, car and truck movements. Um, so moving east between Liberty and High Street, it's a similar section um, where we're still protecting the existing curb lines. We're adding parallel parking in place of angled parking. Um, however, the one difference here is we're transitioning from a three lane section that include, includes a 12 foot turn lane to a two, two lane section. Um, because we don't need turn lanes at High Street. Um, so to maintain safety for pedestrians crossing, we're constructing these bulb out curb returns that shortens the crossing um, and also improving the ramps to meet ADA standards. Um, and as Bo mentioned, making sure the radiuses meet standards for vehicle movements. Um, on curb returns where the ramps do meet ADA standards or the um, radius meets city standards, we're doing our best to protect. Um, so for example, on this curb return, we're protecting the curb because the radius meets standards. However, this ramp doesn't meet ADA standards. So we're just gonna reconstruct the ramp. On the southeast side, both ramps meet ADA standards, um, where the radius doesn't meet city standards. However, the vehicle turning is working, so we've decided to just protect this um, curb return. Also, to kind of go back, we're making sure to reconstruct all driveways um, to make sure, not all driveways, but any driveway where we're not, where they don't meet ADA standards again. Um, and if we're impacting adjacent properties, we're making sure to improve their driveways with our improvements. Bobby, we're not seeing your cursor. Okay. So um, if you can give more detail of where yeah. it is. So um, the proper uh, in terms of the driveways or just when you're explaining general, when you're explaining yeah. the, the locations i would just say the north side of high street or you know just explain the curb returns based on north totally. and east and south or okay. or you know you probably don't have to get into too much of the details of which ones you're protecting either yeah okay sounds good um so we can probably move east So this is where we begin, this entire block is where we begin the two lane section um, with no center turn lanes. And again, we're just matching the existing width of the road. So we're protecting the curbs um, and just restriping to add the bicycle lane. In this block, there are ex some existing parallel parking stalls and we will have to um, remove those parking stalls in order to fit in the bike lane. Um, we chose a few critical areas where we thought parking is definitely a premium, um, and that's mostly related to multifamily residential um, properties. So for example, um, the to the southwest corner, the property adjacent to the southwest corner of Church Street is a multifamily property. So we're, we're choosing to show new parking where we have a bulb out area where we'll build into the existing curb, way, curb line and possibly have to remove trees. Um, and that's kind of the balance where we're trying to protect as many trees as possible, but also provide parking where it might be a premium. Um, so this is an example of new parking and a new curb line with the project. Uh, I'll also mention this is 
uh, alternative one per se with the bike lane going um, adjacent to the street where the parking is behind the bicycle lane. And you'll see a couple blocks to the east where we're showing another option that shows the bike lane going behind the parking stalls. Um, and there's benefits to both when it just stays adjacent to the roadway like this block is showing. Um, it simplifies things and potentially helps us add more parking stalls. Um, where the other option where the bike goes behind the parking stalls, it just eliminates vehicle uh, cyclist conflicts when a car is pulling off to park. Um, again, looking at Church Street, we're showing to improve every curb return um, to bring them up to ADA standards and city uh, radius standards. So we can move east. Um, this is kind of the same story as the last block. Um, a couple of things to note, the da pink dashed lines, those are opportunities for additional, additional parking. And we're showing X's um, where trees would have to be removed to accommodate the parking. Um, so again, it's kind of balancing um, trees and parking and including our bicycle lane, of course. And these, these pink dash lines kind of show what I was talking about, where the bicycle lane goes behind the parking stalls and then cars just pull into the parallel parking without having that conflict with the cyclists. So Bobby, those are, those are two things to note that we're kind of, we're still working with the city and probably seeking public feedback on um, the value of protecting trees versus, you know, uh, installing additional parking stalls. So these exhibits go through and they, they highlight how many stalls were removed and then how many um, stalls we could, you know, reinstall. But at the, you know, at the, the downfall is the trees need to be, you know, have to be removed in those cases. So um, that's the trick with this project when you're, taking away angled parking because you need the width or parallel parking because you need the width for the bike lane to get the parking back you have to widen the road which would have to tear out a lot of trees so we went through the corridor and just showed some options some opportunities for parking stalls that might be at premium locations but you know we're still seeking feedback on is that worth it to remove the trees and that that's one of the you know one of the things then we're also evaluating do we like having the the bike lane go kind of the two options, the bike lane next to the travel way or the bike way, uh, bike lane behind the parking? And then we're so we're weighing through those two options is one of the things we're asking people to kind of consider and weigh in on if they get a chance. All right. So if we move east of cottage. Um, again, we're showing these pink areas on the north and south of the road where there's potential parking opportunities um, and potential tree removals with those opportunities. To the east, um, kind of looking at the southwest corner of Winter and Union Street, this is an existing um, bus, park, bus stop area. So we'll be reconstructing this entire um, intersection or this entire curb return to work with our new design. And the way we're showing it now um, to make the bus stop work is the bikes um, travel behind the parking stalls and then go up onto the sidewalk. And it's kind of a separated bike lane um, with a kind of offset crossing to the east. And this way the bicycles go behind the bus stop, hopefully eliminating um, bus cyclist conflicts. If we, if we were to go the other option where the bicycles um, stay adjacent to the road, then um, most likely the buses would pull off into the bicycle lane. 
um, and we wouldn't have this bowled out completely at the bus stop. So the bikes would just stay on the roadway and they wouldn't be separated. Um, at winter, the northwest and southeast curb returns meet standards. Um, the northwest to the northwest, there's one ramp that doesn't meet ADA standards. So we're showing to reconstruct that. And then to the northeast, we're showing to reconstruct both ramps um, to meet ADA standards. These areas also have um, some funky curb returns currently that you can't quite see, um, mainly to the northeast. Um, and that's another reason why we're reconstructing it. Um, yeah, so this is the last block. And again, same section, just the two lane roadway with the buffered bike lanes. Um, but we're also showing opportunities for parking. And there's this block gives a pretty significant opportunity for parking. But with it comes a lot of tree removals. And you can't quite see the X's on the south side, um, but most of those trees would need to be removed as well. Um, and then our, our improvements end just before Summer Street. So we'll be protecting those curb returns and ramps. And that's it. <laughs> All right, thank you, Bobby. So just to kind of kind of give an idea of where the project, kind of the schedule, kind of looking at. Currently, we're in the preliminary design. Um, the next step is moving on to working to obtain a temporary construction easement acquisition, and that. That process is just so that during construction, and this is mostly looking at some of those intersections that where we might need to, to, in order to form up concrete, we need to be able to put forms and access a little bit of the property to just do construction. After construction is done, the easements then go away and it remains the uh, property owner's property. And looking at having that whole process starts uh, this summer. Um, kind of following after getting the right of way act, temporary construction acquisition going uh, later on this fall, having another open house where we'll have the design more in a finalized state and present that to make sure that there aren't any anything that needs to be addressed prior to our final design, which would be what we would be looking at that would go out for construction to consultants and looking at trying to, or contractors. So kind of looking at having the final design done towards the end of this year with construction scheduled based on federal funding uh, next year. So with that, um, kind of, turn some time over to see if there's any questions or comments. Um, one of the things, you know, I want to at least kind of point out is there is the, uh, the website for this project, which is listed at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, it's at the city website or cityofsalem.net backslash union dash street dash bikeway. And on that site, there is listed a, um, we do have a survey on there that we're asking for some feedback to kind of help us answer some of the questions that we need to kind of finalize this preliminary design and figure out how to move forward. Um, Trevor just did put a link in the chat with that link description. And um, with that, if there's any questions, we can kind of move to those. I do see one here that is asking about the uh, intersection at Church and Cottage. So I'll go back to that slide. And just to read it into the record, it says, are we pulling back curbs on Church at Cottage? Is the dark gray existing or proposed? So that 
the um we are pulling them back because like bobby mentioned we're we're widening we're making larger curb returns on a lot of the intersections so the dark gray represents new asphalt widening area so if you look along the edge of the dark gray there's kind of like a little black dash line and that would be a saw cut and so we are widening a little bit at at those four curb returns i know the shading not all of it came up perfectly on the presentation but um a lot of the curb returns we are slightly widening them because we have to create a larger radius at each corner why is that necessary it does it not function well now as so college the, and winter um this is bobby is that the one with the the wagon wheels or the whatever the so i believe cottage is the one with the weird uh vehicle pole uh, like there are small little turn lanes that aren't necessary. Yeah, so they have, I think it, Michael has a history there, but I think they were at one point considered little left turn lanes that, it, that would allow the yeah, wagon to come around. On Cottage and Union, there's one by the mailbox. I think people use it to pull in the mailbox. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I uh, I don't have street view up, right? I can't recall, let me look. Um, yeah, I do believe it is there at Cottage, Bo. That yeah, it, it is. It's a cottage. Yeah. So the um, the cottage kind of sw it swoops out and gives you like a little like one car left turn lane pocket. And then it has a really sharp uh, curb radius. And so if we left those the way that they are, that would be kind of anti-bike friendly because as your bike is parallel with the roadway, it would lend for cars to want to pull across the bike and then make that sharp corner. So, you know, the short story is all four of those don't meet the city's roadway classifications for curb returns and they don't meet ADA standards. So when you when you go and rebuild all all four ramp or all two ramps at each intersection for ADA, at the same time, you have to rebuild the curb return. So these curb returns are going to be a larger radius than what's there. You'll just be you won't have the little left turn. I guess pocket. I guess I appreciate that they don't meet standards. I, I would think that the standard, I mean, you want to shorten crossing distances for pedestrians. Lengthening crossing distances seems to be counterproductive to that objective. And if they're working fine now, um, I'd encourage you to leave them as is, or at least consider something less drastic. It's it's actually a, it's actually shorter. Um, it's you can't see it on this map. I Michael, can I share my screen, or, Michael, or no? Uh, yeah, Here, let me. Uh, I'm not sure how it's, oh yeah, here we go. So I'm gonna share um, my AutoCAD. I, I popped up the AutoCAD just as we were talking. Let me know when everyone can see this. Can see it, see it. So this gray line, when I click on this, this is an actual, this is what I was talking about. The existing curve returns go like this. And so if you were a car driving along here and you left this and you had a bicyclist here, the bicycle, they'd want to cross the bicyclist and, you know, there'd be a potential conflict and you can see the existing curb return or the existing ramp here. We actually move it closer. And so we take out this non-conforming um, curb return and build a standard curb return and it actually moves your, uh, your crossings are actually closer by, it looks like probably a total of 10 feet. Uh, that's helpful. Thank you. AutoCAD wins again. How about Angela and Gary? You can ask the next question. Go ahead. Hi there. I had took um I took several notes, so I'll go ahead and um go right down the line. So the first thing I just want to thank you about the buffered or the separated bike lanes. So we've got moving cars are separated from moving bikes by those parked bike or by those bar parked cars. Um, and I super appreciate that. So thank you. Um, could you bring up the map so that we could look? I'm interested in the high to church segment. Is that possible to see? Yeah. You like the maps better or do you guys like the AutoCAD better? I like the maps. Although okay. the AutoCAD, you're right. It was totally for the win. It was much easier to understand with that. Okay, here we go. So 
Um, if we're from high to church, so I think that's back there. view. That's okay. here we go. High Pretty to church, sure. lovely. Okay, so this is this high to church. Yeah, this is where um, we no longer have the parked the parallel parking. So we're really just separating bikes uh, from moving cars with us with paint. Right. So I would request that you would put a raised profile stripe on there so that there's some sort of feedback for the drivers uh, who are in their cars that if they cross that paint line, <coughs> that there's a physical feedback for them to realize that they have strayed into an area that is not for them. It is for people on bikes. Okay. This, so some people call that a, a some people call that a durable stripe. So you're talking about the stripe that kind of has the bumps associated in with it? Yeah, uh huh. we've okay. actually, uh, the city of Salem did that downtown um, on the buffered bike lane um, that is in front of the El Elsinore. So again, it's just paint that separates moving cars from bikes. And yes. so they put down that profile. Yeah. Okay. I, I, uh, then the I was understanding that correctly and you were talking about the paint rather than kind of a raised medium, so. Right, right, exactly. I understand that it's not going to be like a cycle track, that it is just paint, but um, paint doesn't make the mamas feel any safe, safer. But if there's some sort of physical feedback that that's, um, that's at least one step closer to being helpful. And um, the other thing I'd say is that you were talking about uh, whether the bikes continue straight and cars pull in here at the end towards church or whether you show the other option of that the cars stay out and the bikes follow that curb line. Um, I would say as an interested but concerned cyclist, I much prefer staying on the inside. That okay. that would be my preference as an interested and concerned and somebody who's with children for sure. Um, I would also say there was this conversation you were talking about, like, you know, if we, if we Put in, we can put in a few more parking spots, but we would lose trees, or do we keep trees, but then we have less parking? I guess I would point to the city's um, most recent discussions about response to climate change um, and their commitment uh, looking forward. Um, and so if I'm thinking about climate change, I think trees go over cars. So yeah, I would say we, we hope that we have fewer people having to drive. Um, and we have more trees uh, to help us in this urban landscape. So that would be, again, my vote for that. Um, uh, then the other thing, if you could go one more slide to the cottage to winter section. So let's see. Wrong way. Angela, sorry, can you clarify on you what you preferred go staying inside? When you said inside, what did you mean? Uh, I mean, like closer to the curb or closer to the road? Closer to the curb. Okay, gotcha. So cool. if, if, yeah. if I have to choose between a parked car near moving cars or a bicyclist near moving cars, I will always choose the parked car over by okay. the moving cars. Yeah, gotcha. It creates Thank a you. nice little barrier, which as a mom, if I'm with children and as a teacher, right, if I'm with my students, I would love to have those parked cars be just one more barrier between me and those moving cars, particularly as we um, enter an intersection. Okay, you know, as thank we're getting you up for clarifying. Yeah, thank you. Um, I see here on where it goes to Winter Street, I do like that idea uh, that uh, because of the, the buses moving the bikes up onto the sidewalk for a little bit, I would just say I would really want really thoughtful um, signage or kind of coloring even perhaps. You could do like green stripes or something that so that people it's very clear what, what they're supposed to do there because that is a difference of what's being done in other places. But the thing that I think caught my most attention is this union to winter um, section. So the city put together, uh, spent quite a bit of time putting together the maple, excuse me, the winter maple bikeway concept. And in that document, they show a roundabout. So yes, that is a future, future element that is one that is in the master plan. So but one that this project wasn't specifically looking at this one specifically looking at implementing the bike lanes. So one of the one of the thoughts we're still considering here is making sure that none of the improvements that we put in would have to be removed 
as part of the installation of a, a, a roundabout. Okay, so I guess I live by the touch once principle, which is if we're working there, why don't we just touch that space once and do an integrated plan versus having a plan for now and oh, by the way, then we'll come back later and we'll do something different. So yes, that is a, that's, that's a good point. So, um, and we have had that discussion internally. It's just where the funding comes from because the, the roundabout, we don't have the funding per se yet for putting the roundabout in. So a roundabout, that concept plan you're showing is not necessarily designed for traffic flows and the, the volumes of traffic. And so the roundabout has the potential to have a lot bigger of a footprint where we're currently showing protecting curb to curb and you're not having to buy properties or, you know, I think that's where the, the different costs come in for the roundabout um, at the moment was just, it's such a, so much of a bigger um, footprint. Yeah. I think the idea of that roundabout is it was going to be a mini roundabout. Um, maybe there would be a, like a tree in the middle of it, but um, very small, you know, that, that it, ideally it would fit within the existing footprint of the intersection. Um, so, you know, not designing it for big trucks or anything. Um, I think the idea was to still be able to get, you know, a city bus through it, but that was about the biggest vehicle. Julie here, if you might don't mind, I'll just chime in really quickly. I just wanted to clarify for Angela, Angela and Gary's sake that <clears throat> we applied for funding for this particular project before the Winter Maple Greenway plan was developed. And so unfortunately the funding for this element was not included in the application because we did not know that at the time. So, um, but we definitely have been looking to see what we could do to either advance that or at least protect the future possibility. And yes, there are buses that do go through here and turn from Union on to Winter. So it does make for a, even though it is a mini roundabout, it does still make for um, larger um, uh, right of way needs. And I didn't think they turn, don't the buses just go straight? They turn from Union Street left onto Winter Street. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna just sum up so I make sure I'm on the same page. So the consultants that did this plan that we're looking at tonight knew about this plan done by the other consultants. Is that true? Yes. Okay, okay. Um, but it's coming down to dollars. So we're gonna, um, what I would call it, what I would say is that instead of buying all new kitchen cabinets, I'm just gonna throw some paint on the ones I have right now until my husband wins the lottery. Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> like I said, we're trying to work on the funding source so that we can advance that to get it, you know, move that up so that we can try to hopefully incorporate it. Yeah, no, sorry, I didn't understand that. So, so like you're gonna try to get there on this project or you're like, we ain't gonna get there. I'm just gonna slap some paint on it. We're gonna do it down the road. We're looking at the funding sources right now to see what we can do. I don't know what that means. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I'll let somebody go, but I still don't know what that means. Okay. Gary, All do you right, wanna go next? Peter, how about you go next? Oh yeah, let's go to Peter next and then we'll come back okay. to you guys. Yes, thank you. Uh, my notes were very similar to what Angela just said. Uh, I believe that any time that you have bikes sharing the road with cars, they ought to be on the inside of the parking, like she said. And there should never be a time when they are in the same lane. Uh, I'd like to ask how many of you have ridden your bikes downtown uh, anywhere in the downtown area. That's what I thought. Uh, if you do it, you'll find out what, why she's saying that and why I'm saying it. Uh, it's just not safe to be driving down and, and you know the bike lanes that there are downtown, which are not which are not many, uh, are kind of a joke. You know, they're not, they don't feel safe. 
And the only place where it feels safe is that place, I guess it's on High Street, where you do have a situation like this, where the cars separate uh, the bikes from the traffic by, you know, for about a block or two there. And that's really about the only place. So I really want to underline what she said. I think that's very important. I ride my bike downtown a lot and I don't like it uh, because of that. Um, then on the question of uh, bikes versus tree, I mean, uh, 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 park, parking spots versus trees, I think because of the climate change things that she mentioned, the climate change considerations, uh, it's got to be uh, it's got to be trees every time because the the cars create more uh, global warming pollution pollution, and the trees help us deal with the global warming pollution. So when you take away a tree and put a parking space in there, you're uh, twice making the uh, situation worse for climate change. So I don't think there's really any question if you take climate change into account as to what the answer is there. And the last question, and this is kind of a little bit beyond um, this particular project, uh, and that is, um, you know, I, I live uh, down near Fairmount Hill. And so how am I gonna get to Union Street? Uh, I'm still going to be facing a whole lot of unsafe bicycle uh, travel to get there. And I'm noticing that it's taken 10 years to get from the conception stage to where we are right now. And we're not even, you know, we haven't even gotten to construction yet, which is next year, you say, uh, if it is. And so if we're going to get serious about this business of, uh, of assisting bike travelers uh, and especially uh, uh, bike travelers and pedestrians and um, people who are traveling in some other way than in an, in an automobile. There's gotta be some consideration given to the entire, reaching the entire downtown area and in fact the entire town, uh, making it safer for um, non-motorized transportation. So I just wanna put that in the record. Uh, I know it's beyond the scope of this meeting um, but I, I really feel it's very important to understand that all these projects have to get finished. The one that's supposed to take traffic uh, over to the, the park, um, you know, all, the, all those. Uh, they've been in planning stages for a long, long time now. And meanwhile, there have been lots of improvements to the roads, but not very much improvement to the bike lanes. Thanks. All right, let's go with Rich. Hi, yeah, I Sorry, Rich, I accidentally muted you. You can unmute yourself. That was my mistake. Oh, I was wondering what popped up there. Hi, okay, start again. So also, I also wanted to weigh in on the trees, but um, from another perspective is, um, I bike down the street a lot and I avoid it during rush hour, the evening rush hour, because um, a lot of the cars um, that are trying to get around the slow traffic on Marion um, will take Union and they'll come zooming down there and they're in a hurry. So they're not going 25 miles an hour. Um, and I think just putting, you know, Putting more parking spaces there is just going to encourage more cars to go down the street. I mean, I think it would be um, better to, you know, discourage the cars because this is going to be a major, you know, one of the few bike safe areas that we have. Um, and, um, and so I would weigh in definitely on, you know, not worrying about the parking spaces as much as um, saving the trees and I mean and like I said mostly to the surge traffic because I mean usually during the day it's no problem biking down the industry but you get start getting towards rush hour and it gets a little dangerous so well, that was all I wanted to say. 
Warren, how about you go next? Hi, all. Um, I wanted to open first up with, you can hear me, right? Yeah. OK, I wanted to open up. If you can move back Union Street, uh, High Street to Union, um, unlike the bicyclists that are trying to get this all through, some of us actually have businesses in this area. Let's see, that's church. One more. There you go. So I'm on the northwest corner. Yeah, yeah, no. Right there. Yes, that's it. I'm in the northwest corner of Church and Union Street. So I am a heavy user of Church and High Street and Union Street. And I see action uh, daily between Hope and Host and Arches and the homeless. Um, so I just wanted to disclose first, I'm, I'm a property owner in the area. And second, I was on city council and, uh, and, and supported the bike lanes that we put on Church and High Street. My questions, I had five of them. But one of my questions was, has there been a study on the use of the bike lanes on church and high streets? Because when I travel those lanes, when I travel high in church, I don't see much use at all. Um, not much at all. And then what I do see is, is a lot of the homeless people don't use crosswalks. They just cross wherever they want. So you can do what you want to do with the crosswalks and sidewalks, but it just doesn't get used like that, at least in this neighborhood. Um, so has there been a study on, on the use of high and church bike lanes? Uh, no. Has not. OK. Um, I will uh, agree with Rich in his comment. Uh, Union Street is lightly used during the daytime. It's extremely heavily used um, at the 5 o'clock hour on non-pandemic uh, time periods of time, it's it's a it's a safety valve, you might say, for the traffic that's going down Marion Street. Um, uh, the other thing on that one, we're still on Union Street. Um, Howard Street is now in session. Uh, their kids are using the parking lot. It's in this particular diagram. It's in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, the kids use this strip of land between the sidewalk and the street as a place to sit and get out of the sun. Um, go down there during, I don't know when, when they have their, their, their recess, but I do know, do know that that area is heavily, heavily used. Um, so I just want to let you know that if you remove that to put parking in that area, really the parking in this, this at least in this stretch of Union Street is used uh, only by the residents that are on the south end of the, of the block and on the north next to Chemeketa uh, commu uh, Community College's uh, Business and Indus Industry. Uh, it's used by them and pretty much nobody else uses it. Um, we have quite a few state workers that come and park further away. They don't want to pay the fee for the state parking. So um, let's see. Oh, and another two other comments that I had. Uh, one was the parking duration. When you're working on this, the duration of parking, some places are unlimited. Some of them are two hours, some of them are an hour and a half. I made note of this. I have talked about this before with city staff. Uh, it needs to be consistent in the neighborhood. Uh, I'd like to see that at least looked or addressed with it at this point. And the other one was, and you don't have it on your diagram, but it would help traffic flow in this area. Uh, on High Street, south of Union Street, uh, between Union and Marion, there's a training lane that goes into the parking structure it would be very much, uh, it, and I, I talked to Peter Fernandez about, about basically eliminating that and adding a second southbound lane on High Street between Union and, and Marion Street um, because there's a lot of cars that back up uh, that are trying to get onto the bridge on that right-hand lane going over. And as a result, it backs, it all backs up. So, and, and, the, and there's not much traffic at all that comes off of Marion that wants to get into the parking structure. It's very rare, it does happen, but very rare. So I think those are my questions at this point. I'm interested to see it. I did support it when I was on council. I'm just, I just question if there's not the use um, elsewhere on high in church, do we need to be spending the money here? I, I, again, take it as it is. I do support this. I just wanna make sure that it's being spent wisely. That's all I have. So there's a couple of questions in the chat, but let's go back to Angela and Gary so they can finish asking their question. Yeah. Okay, you're on. Okay. Um, it, one, of my, one of my questions has to do with the left turn lane at Liberty, um, Liberty and Union Street. So, um, you know, was there, 
some thought about whether or not we actually need to provide left turn lanes there. Um, I know it might be worth looking at the turning movements. I, I don't get the impression that that intersection is busy now or will be busy. I like the idea of a traffic signal there, um, but you know maybe we don't need the left turn lanes there. I think you know that space could probably be used, um, you know, for some more trees or something. Um, if you just narrow the whole road up or whatever. Um, so that's just a general comment, I guess. Um, and and I guess like some of the other people were commenting um, that some of the curb returns and some of these intersections look too big. So I know that I appreciate the idea that we're getting rid of the the little um, right turn lane thing that wows out at each of these intersections. But um, I guess I'd encourage the designers to look at you know at how much space does a does a bus really need you know turning through there. Um, you know, in which directions our bus is coming from or going to. Um, I'm not even sure it's necessary to accommodate, you know, a, a vehicle with, you know, that kind of an axle, um, you know, dimension on it. So I'd like to see those curb returns. Um, yeah, as, as tight as, as, they, as they can be, really. Um, but yeah, it, thanks for the... Uh, the drawings here. I was going to ask: Are these drawings going to be available on on a website? They listed the website. Yeah, we're going to post both the uh, PowerPoint and okay. the the presentation on the website that where okay. the questionnaire is. Okay. Thank you. And one thing, uh, Gary, on all those those intersections, you you notice how we in the current configuration there is no bulb out. Right, so so the road right. is actually significantly wider. So so with every one of these bulb outs, we actually bring, you know, when when you're taking away that that yeah. section and making it only a, you know, you're actually bringing the, bringing the pedestrians, you know, yeah, ten. I agree. This it's good they're they're getting smaller, but those roads are really over designed now, um, you know, and and so we have a we have a six foot bike lane, we have a three foot buffer. It looks like, you know, and and then there's the lane that the cars are in, and so. You know, do we really need a, a generous turn radius there too? Because that you put all that space together, which cars could use all of that space to make their turn, and it, it I mean, it looks like a 30 foot radius, and it looks like they could take it about 20 miles an hour to me. Okay, all right. So, some of the questions in the chat, let me um scroll up here. Uh, can you discuss the detail at Winter Street with the bus stop? Issue with bikes on the sidewalk versus other options, bike through or raised alignment. See, I'll get down there and Bobby, do you want to, or Michael? I don't know if we want to talk about the alternatives. We, we looked at I think three alternatives at this location. Um, and I think this is the one we've decided was the most bike friendly. Um, it, it's always, it's hard to see on this little map or, you know, cause I can't zoom and I can't do things, but, um, this one, you know, yeah, you, you have potential for bike pedestrian conflict where, um, you know, uh, like was previously mentioned by Angela, we, we will be painting this and striping it green and we'll have signage. And, you know, so basically, um, you know, pedestrians to be protected. So this gives a pedestrian landing area for them to get safely on and off the bus and it pulls the bicyclists as far away from the bus as possible. And it meets all ADA standards for everyone crossing in any direction. Um, so the other options are, you know, if you left the bikes closer to the roadway, which would get, you know, then you could have a bike, um, bike bus conflict. Um, this, is, this is a raised, um, this actually, it, you, you can't see it, but it, you know, it, this is a raised, so you raise up in this one. Um, you could also do a cut through with the bike stay down at the same grade as the road. Um, but then that one just makes it a little trickier for how do the pedestrians get across that, you know, that they'd have to ramp down and ramp back up. So we, we thought this was the friendliest bicycle pedestrian compromise. It also gave you a, a pretty good landing for, for the bus loading. And I don't know, Bobby, if you have any other things. No, you said it all. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, next question is, would you please address how the project connects at either end to create a continuous route? First one being from the commercial, from Commercial Street to the fr to front and the Union Street Bridge, and the second one from Summer East to the 12th Street Promenade. So yeah, so starting on the commercial end, um, the bike facility, let me scroll down to that end. I don't know if we go far enough to see here, but we'll, if not, I will go out and pull up a map. So let's see here. Um, just to add a comment while you're looking is, so we have this wonderful separated bike lane on the segment we're talking about, but it to, uh, to the west, the connection to the park becomes Sharrow's, and I think at both of the intersections or at the uh, Front Street intersection, there is a 10 foot long bike lane. So seems like there's lots of opportunities between commercial and front um, to add the same kind of, at least a bike lane, if not a separated bike lane on that stretch as well. So, yeah, so what we've got right now is we've got here on the edge is the, the Union Street Bridge and the bike lane basically comes across and as it has been mentioned, it's, a, it's marked as Sharrow's. So it shares a travel lane with traffic to cross over uh, Front Street, and then down between Front Street and Commercial is the, it's also a Sharrow until you get towards the end where then that's where the bike, you know, the dedicated bike lane starts because cars are forced to turn right onto Commercial Street at that point, and the bikes can go straight across. So that's where we're looking at picking up the bikes would be from the bike signal that was previously installed at Commercial and Union. So, so while you're there, go uh, west, crossing uh, Commercial, and um, you know again, there's essentially no treatment on that stretch of section of Union between Commercial and Front, going west. So that section here between Union and Front is where it's actually, as we get up here towards Commercial Street, there is the bike lane. And then further going to the west is marked out with Sharrow's to, to Front Street. Is there some reason not to continue the bike lane there? I am not sure. I'll have to do some research on what, what was the design process behind that block? I don't know that one off the top of my head. Robert, if I can jump in just for a second, are you saying why is there an eastbound bike lane on Union Street between commercial and front, but not a westbound? Is that what you're asking? Well, I think it's more about uh, we have a bike lane part of the way, and then it just becomes a sharrow. And in terms of you know the users that we're trying to get on a family friendly uh, bike way. Um, Sharrows don't cut it. Um, it would be best to have a bike lane. And at the image that we're looking at there now, sure looks like there's space to stripe a bike lane in um, to provide that connection down to the front street crossing. I absolutely agree. So that one, I like I said, I can't answer that one right now. We'll have to look into that one and get back around to that question. Thank you. And so the second half of that was on the other end um, at Summit Street. And so, the yeah, Street. on the other end, and I'm not sure if we showed it in these drawings, there is currently bike lanes on, and that was the, the actual goal for the mid Midterm goal was to take the bike friendly through Winter Street. And one of the reasons we decided to go yet another block is there is existing bike lanes on Summer Street 
So that's what we were looking at tying the bike lanes into is that way they would tie into existing bike facilities on Summer Street, which tie into the North Capitol Mall and other areas there. Is there anything that you can say about the connection to the 12th Street Promenade? I mean, I, I understand the connections that you're making to Summer and to the Winter Street Bikeway, um, but in terms of the East-West connection, and Union Street is a wonderful East-West connection. I'll say that because I used it as a commuter for about 15 years and continue to use it uh, to this day. Um, but in terms of that East-West connection, again, to the, to the promenade on 12th Street would be something very worthwhile to talk to. I, I'll just jump in that the um, this connects both to Summer Street, but also to the Winter Street um, family friendly bikeway, which you know, I know we have not done all of the improvements on that we have planned, but the um, intent here is that at least for this intermediate stage, we can use both Summer Street in the southbound direction and then Winter Street in both north and southbound to get down to Chemeketa Street, which provides a good east west connection over to the 12th Street Promenade and beyond. All right, Rich, you have another question? Go ahead. Yeah, um, I was th um, looking at uh, a lot of the comments about the existing bike lanes on Church and High Street and you know how sometimes they're not as useful. I find the one on, useful, on Church Street is pretty useful. You can go all the way from, um, pretty much from um, the park all the way um, you know, down you know, past Marion, uh, down to Union. Um, but the bike lane that's on High Street, it, it starts on Marion. I mean, who's gonna bike down Marion to get on the bike lane? I mean, is there any consideration? I know you were talking about putting um, you know the the backup of the traffic on high street there in front of you know in front of the parking ramp um, that's where there needs to be a bike lane that connects to the existing one on high street because um, then it would make sense you have the bike lane coming down union and then you could go onto the bike lane that's um, that's on high street but the way it is now, it's that that block, just as it was mentioned, is a complete mess to start with. And and having that that bike lane start on Marion is useless. I mean, I usually have to go up Jamaica in order to get it. So I just wanted to bring that up. All right. Um, I just want to remind everybody the link is in the chat. Um, cityofsalem.net slash Union Street Bikeway. Um, go to that and fill out the questionnaire um, so we can have a record of your, your thoughts and your comments. And also feel free to share that link um, and have others. I will upload this presentation to that website tomorrow so people can watch it and then uh, respond um, to the survey if they so choose. Um, so thank you for your participation in this. And if you have any further questions, let me know. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording. Have a nice night, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all.